you was to ask me 18 years ago that I think I would be here, I would say never my wildest dreams. As a kid born and raised on the south side of Columbus, I was raised in a predominantly single family, single parent home to a mother that worked two jobs, still works two jobs today. Um, I'm the oldest of seven kids on both my mom and my dad's side. Um, I met my father when I was 15. Um, due to his absence, I, I, was, I probably primarily looked up to two, two of my grandfathers. Uh, one was more spiritual, uh, the other was a cool grandfather. <laughs> Smooth, bald head, well-dressed, mannerisms, pedicure feet, manicure hands. As you can see, his appearance was all, uh, was everything, and I learned a lot of the stuff from him. Uh, growing up on the south side for me was everything. My friends were on, on that side of town, I had family across the bridge, and it was a community. And as a kid, to me, some of the stuff that I saw was normal. Police sirens were normal, gunshots were normal, seeing drugs was normal, seeing weapons was normal. Proud Columbus City School graduate, Eastmore Academy, uh, 2004. And going into my senior year, or pretty much my high school career, I was a mediocre student. Heading into my senior year, all I cared about was girls, getting fly, and playing basketball. <laughs> um, and heading into the summer, I had got denied to every college that I had applied to. And I had no idea what I was going to do after I graduated high school. And at this time, I started hanging with new friends. So we were doing, a week after I graduated, I was hanging out with my new friends and we decided to go to Walmart. We go to Walmart, I wanted to buy a weapon. I told y'all growing up I had seen them, I had hold, I'd held them, but I had never had my, I had never had my own weapon. Um, so I decided to buy an aerosol pistol. And keep in mind, my mom worked two jobs, so she honestly didn't know what I was doing, but I was old enough to still do what I wanted to do. Um, so I bought, the, I bought the weapon. And holding that weapon made me feel special. And so when I got home, what I did was, if you ever seen an aerosol weapon, the tip is orange. I got home, I painted the tip black. I painted the tip of my tip of this weapon that now that I consider the gun black. The same friends who I've been hanging with, or just recently started hanging with, have been committing crimes throughout my high school career, and I didn't know. But I knew they was getting money, but I never knew how they got money. And so they called me one day after they graduate to go celebrate, like ride with us right quick. We're about to go hit a lick. But I bring that gun with you. So I bring it. They commit the crime, and as I'm sitting in the car, as the crime is being committed, I look back out the window, and I see him running out with a bag full of money. And I mean, and he's running in slow motion. Money flying everywhere. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what did I just get myself into? We go back to the house. I take the weapon back, put it in my car, and as I get ready to say goodbye, police pull up. They arrest me. I sit in jail for like a week or two, and... I get out of jail and there's a letter waiting on me from Wright State University. Had no idea where Wright State University was. Never visited, never seen it, didn't even know what a raider was. That was our mascot. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I open it and then I'm, I'm thinking another denial letter on top of a pending, a pending trial that I'm going through. I get the letter, I'm accepted to Wright State. And honestly, until two years ago, my mom finally told me that she had applied for me. She had applied for me. I'm like, where did you apply this at? And so I, I, I immediately accepted yes. No idea how I was going to get there, but I said, you know what? Let's go to Wright State. And, keep it. and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I still got to go to court to think about this trial that I get that, that for this crime that was committed. I end up going to trial. I get three years probation. Other guys are attending to jail time. Those three years probation felt like I was doing jail time too. And if you know anything about being a convicted, felon, a convicted felon or people that are convicted felons, that road is hard. And so I go to college, I get in trouble again in college, receiving stolen property. So here I am with a felony and a misdemeanor. No idea what I'm going to do, and I'm on probation. I graduate college. And once I graduate college, I can't get a job. Keep in mind, I graduated college with two degrees. And so in this lifespan of me getting convicted of a felon, getting a misdemeanor, 
graduating college that still wasn't good enough for society and for those running organizations that I wanted to get a job. So in the meantime, to, to keep funds, I'm a janitor, I'm a custodian, I wash dishes, I'm a busboy. I'm a busboy with two degrees working at Max and Irma's in German Village, working in warehouses. I immediately get depressed. Because at this time, my mom was giving me $100 a week. I'm driving her car. I'm living in her house. I'm taking $100, going to the casino, gambling $100 away, and losing it just because I wanted more money. I immediately go into a depression, and I'm getting ready to commit suicide. So I call my mom. Mom, I don't want to live no more. She immediately starts crying hysterically. She didn't call my grandfather. The one remember I told you earlier was so cool, calm, and collective. He didn't call me and said, boy, what the hell is wrong with you? literally just like that and I'm just like I can't get a job I ain't got no money he said you were to fix that shit I call my mom back and I rethink about what I just said and I apologize not knowing that my siblings look up to me she asks me who's going to walk in such a down the aisle when she gets ready to get married who's going to help raise her brother who's, who's younger so I changed the trajectory of my life fast forward to 2010 Laws have changed, I get my record expunged. I also had applied for a pardon through Kasich, Governor Kasich at the time. The same day that I got my pardon letter denying my pardon, the same day that I got my record expunged in Franklin County. That one thing changed my life. I got my record expunged at 28. From 18 to 28, I was a convicted felon. Got my record expunged, started applying for jobs. Got my first job at Franklin County, Franklin County um, children's service as a caseworker. Went on then to get a new job at Franklin County Job and Family Services. I joined the military at 30. Deployed to Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait. Got a job at City of Columbus as a, as a neighborhood program specialist. Interviewed while I was in Iraq for a job with the city as a program manager for MBK. And now I work in the mayor's office. I worked hard to get here, goddamn hard to get here. And one of the reasons I call my story the marathon is because I didn't quit. I had every opportunity to quit. And the road to get here was hard. And I'm not going to stop. The journey is just beginning, so the marathon continues.